Hi everyone, Robot Man here. Well, today we're going to do something pretty exciting. We're going to use some new Lego Spike Prime kits. Lego Spike Prime was released in about 2020, and since then, thousands of people around the world make awesome robots like this. You might even make some of these one day. Today, though, we might be doing something a little bit different. They come in a kit like this, which we're going to keep tidy, and you might even have more pieces than that. Depends how much money your school spent. But it's important that we look after these and make them nice and tidy at the end of the lesson. This is the most important part of the kit. It's called the hub, the H-U-B hub. And it's like the brain of your robot. It's pretty much a computer that you can plug things into, like sensors and motors. And it communicates with your computer or device or tablet, whatever you're using, to code them. That's right, we're going to code these robots and we're going to tell this hub what we've coded and then the robot's going to do what we've asked it to do. There's a power button at the bottom. You hold this in for about a second and release it and then it will turn on. And you can also use that button later on to run your code. So when we code it on our device you, and the code's actually on the hub, we can press that button to run it, as long as there's a number on the screen. At the moment, you can see a love heart there, but if there's a zero there and our code says zero and we press that button, it'll run. Later on, when you want to turn it off, you just hold that button in for about five seconds and your robot will turn off. There are six holes on the side called ports. That's where we plug things into. So we plug things like sensors and motors into those holes. And I don't know if you can see it very easily, but they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. If you look closely at the hub, you'll see those letters. I've just typed them in there so you can see them easier. We might use all of those ports, or we might just use some of those ports. But they're all what's called input or output, which means you can either plug sensors or motors into any of those ports, and it doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as your code kind of matches what you've plugged things into. There's a Bluetooth button there, and you need to press that when you want to connect your hub to your device. So when you're ready to connect and run your code, you press that button, and what happens is that Bluetooth button will start flashing. It'll go blue and off, on and off with a blue light, and it makes a bit of a beeping sound. And inside your app, which you can probably recognize some of you will recognize that it looks like scratch there is a connect button so when you want to press when you want to connect you need to press the word connect that's pretty straightforward isn't it so look on the top of your screen look for the word connect and press that and when you tap on that or click on that you'll see that there is an option to choose a green option there so tap on green because your hub should be updated to the latest firmware so tap on the green one unless you've got a white light then tap on the white one but then you've got to update it which is a bit of a pain tap on the green one and then you'll be reminded that your hub needs to be turned on and that your bluetooth button needs to be pressed that bluetooth button i showed you before and when you do press the bluetooth button you will see that all the robots that are turned on will appear on the right hand side and my robots are labeled with letters your robots might be labeled something else but whatever name is on your hub that's what one you need to tap on to connect so press connect when you know which one it is there might be other ones that appear there at the same time so just make sure you connect to your one and when you do connect you'll see back on the code on your device you'll see that there's a little green tick that appears on the image of the hub there that place there is a pretty handy place to tap or click later on because when you do tap on there, you'll see that it shows you where all your motors and sensors are actually plugged into. It also shows you things like the battery life, and it gives you an option to even see the name of your robot. Okay, so green tick, you're good to go. And you'll also notice that when you've made some code, you can press play down the bottom. Okay, and that's, that's a quick way of making your robot run. Um, if you want to stop, you press stop. Some students have a bit of a habit of tapping those or clicking those too quickly and too often and it freezes and locks up. So just press them once at a time and be patient. There's also a number there. That's what number slot that your code saved into. It defaults to zero normally. So if you have um, no 
no other previous codes on your device, then it'll be zero, which means there's 20 slots. So you can have it, you can have up to 20 different programs on your device. And whatever number's there, that's the number that should appear on your hub when you're running your code. If you want to press the button on your hub to make it run, make sure that that number matches the same number that's on your code. You can also tap that number to just download your code without actually running it. So if you just wanted to get the code on the robot without it running, you can tap on that and press download. There's a couple of handy options over here to magnify the screen. That's good for zooming in and zooming out. Okay. But notice normally when you start a new project, you'll have a when program starts block there. And that'll everything you put here will take place when you press play. So you need to add some blocks to this main block here to make a stack of blocks. Usually if you're going to make something with motors, you use one of these top two colors. If it's a single motor, you will use some of these blue blocks. And if it's like two, two motors that move together to make a vehicle move, you use the pink ones. So often if I'm building some sort of car, I'll use some of these blocks here. You need to tell the hub which ports you plug the motors into. So when you plug it in, when you plug your motors in, I'll just plug a couple in now. When you plug it in, you'll see them appear up here. Okay. And it says C and D up there. If you tap on there, you can see the motors are plugged into C and D. Okay. So you make sure that says C and D there. And then you need to normally set the speed. Okay. Now don't do a number bigger than 100. You can do crazy numbers in there, but obviously you can't really go faster than 100%. And I've found that if you go faster than 100%, then often the vehicle will have errors, like it won't go straight, or my device will freeze. So 99, if you want to go 100, if you want to go maximum speed, 100 is good, or even slower is good sometimes. Uh, and then you can start moving. And that'll get a car moving if you've got two motors with two wheels on it. But there's lots of blocks you can play with. This is for single motors, if you've just got one motor doing something. This, still, this will display things on your screen of the hub. Okay, so you can actually make things appear on the screen. This will make your robot play sounds and things. Events are important. Okay, it's a bit like this block here. When program starts is here, but you can get it to do other things. You can even get your robot to react when it's tilted or when a timer reaches a certain time. So you can expl experiment with all these, but uh, often I start with when program starts. Okay. The control section is good if you want to make things uh, repeat or loop or wait or these are very important too. If something happens, then do this. Otherwise, do this. But you can experiment with all that later. The sensors tab often fit inside those control sections. So this is if you're using a sensor, then you can use one of those. Or you can go back to the events and use the sensor up here. Because you can sometimes create separate stacks when the program starts to do this but when the robot sees the color red then get it to do this okay and when you press play down here it'll run both stacks at the same time so it's pretty cool an easy way to to make your robot do different things is to create different stacks so these bottom three options are pretty um, advanced and some of you might not ever use those, but a lot of you, if you're really into coding and robotics, you might want to experiment with some of those. We won't go into them now. There are options down here, down the bottom here, there's another option to add more blocks um, on here. So there's all sorts of things you can do. You can add more motor commands. So you could add these two, for example, close this. And now you've got more movement options down the bottom here, okay? So there's more blocks you can play with down the bottom there. So hopefully that's a good introduction to the program. If your program ever freezes or you have problems, you can always close the app, reopen it, and you'll see that your codes are saved here. Okay. Um, if you go, if you press the home button here and press start, there's a good introduction to all the main sensors and what to do with motors and things and even the hub. So you can have a look at that if you're interested. Okay, at the end of today's lesson, I want to make sure that your robot is either dismantled or put in a certain place. Your teacher will tell you that 
right now. I'm just going to wait here for a few seconds while your teacher says what to do with your robot at the end of today's lesson. And we also want you to tidy up your kit in five minutes. Your teacher doesn't want you to pack up in one minute. It's not a race to pack up. We want you to spend some time making it really tidy, sorting out all the little bits and making it as beautiful as you can. So next time you use it, it looks great and it's easy to find stuff. So spend five minutes packing up at the end. And the two most important rules today are these. What do you think they are? <laughs> Number one rule is be nice to each other. Some of you will be working in groups, perhaps, but we've always, always got to be nice to each other. If you're working in a group, make sure that you are not bossy or dominant and make sure you don't sit there and do nothing, but contribute evenly. Please be nice to each other, respect each other's opinions and try and listen to each other. And if today's lesson involves any sort of competition at all, make sure you are a good sport. Okay, treat other people nicely, treat them the way you like to be treated, be kind. Okay, also be nice to the equipment. It's really important that you are very nice to this robotic equipment because it is very expensive and awesome and we want it to stay awesome forever. So please be gentle with it and be respectful and look after it. Pretend that you spent $600 on it because that's how much it costs pretty much. So look after it. And uh, if you're rough or silly or disrespectful to each other, then I'm going to have to say you miss out. So your teacher will tell you to say, hey, you're not being responsible. You need to sit out for a while. Anyway, if you visit my website or my YouTube channel, there's lots of tips on how to use Spike Prime. Lots of crazy ideas and lots of good tips. So check them out and have fun.